Welcome to State Bar of Michigan's On Balance Podcast, where we talk about practice management and lawyer wellness for a thriving law practice with your hosts, Joanne Hathaway and Tish Vincent, here on Legal Talk Network. Take it away, ladies. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the State Bar of Michigan On Balance podcast on Legal Talk Network. This is Joanne Hathaway, Practice Management Advisor for the Practice Management Resource Center at the State Bar of Michigan. And this is Tish Vincent, the Program Administrator for the Lawyers and Judges Assistance Program at the State Bar of Michigan. We are recording today's show at the NEXT conference in Detroit, Michigan. Joining us now, we have Justice Curtis Wilder of the Supreme Court of Michigan. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Before we get started, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm the newest justice on the Michigan Supreme Court. I've been there since May 9. I'm the 112th justice, the fifth African-American justice in the Supreme Court's history. Uh, Before that, I was at the Michigan Court of Appeals for 18 years and at the Washtenaw County Circuit Court for seven years. Uh, So I've been around 25 years and uh, really glad to be here on the Supreme Court. Thank you for joining us today, Justice Wilder. We're here to discuss arguing cases in the Supreme Court. It's a a great topic. Um, One of the fascinating things about arguing cases in the Supreme Court is you have to consider that it really starts at the trial court level. Uh, Whenever you're presenting your case at the trial court, you have to think about is this a really big issue? And if it is, what do I need to do to preserve the record so that ultimately I can get this case to the Michigan Supreme Court? Uh, It's a fascinating concept because there are two different specialties. Uh, Trying a case and arguing a a case on appeal are two different skill sets. So you want to think about that when you're the trial lawyer who has that case. Discussing it with an appellate lawyer What are the pitfalls in my trying this case that might arise before I present this case to the circuit court? Uh, How do I make sure that any of these pitfalls are things that I can overcome so that on balance, if I don't prevail or even if I do prevail on the other side appeals, I'm in the best position to ultimately argue these issues at the Supreme Court? So an attorney shouldn't think that they have the skill set to do appellate work because they have the skill set to do good trial work. That's very true. Uh, There are two different skills. And when you're trying a case at the lower court level, dealing with the jury, or even if it's a bench trial, uh, the the issues of persuasiveness, uh, witness preparation, witness presentation, these are all very different skills from looking at a cold, hard record and telling an appellate court Uh, what things in the record are most significant uh, that the court ought to consider in deciding maybe a new area of law or clarifying an area of law. You're not really concerned about that area of law when you're putting witnesses on the stand. Mm -hmm. You're you're concerned about proving facts. At the appellate court, you're concerned about applying those facts to an area of law. I'm wondering what you think a trial attorney could do to improve their understanding of that process or find appellate attorneys that might help them understand what they should be preserving? When I was in private practice, uh, we had a regular opportunity to meet with the lawyers in our firm that regularly argued appeals. And we would talk to them about the various pitfalls that would come up. I was an employment discrimination uh, attorney. So we would talk about the different areas of law. One of the emerging issues was uh, after acquired evidence. That ultimately was decided by the U.S. Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Uh, After acquired evidence being what happens if an employer hires somebody and then discovers after the fact that the employee failed to disclose important information that might have altered the hiring decision. And in order to preserve that issue, Uh, You had to understand what was happening in the appellate courts. And if you were not conscious of that as a trial lawyer, you would never bring those issues up, and therefore you would lose the issue on appeal. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of example that I'm I'm talking about. Uh, If you're not focused on appeals as a trial lawyer, you may miss some things that are emerging 
in the appellate courts and in the Supreme Courts around the country uh, or in your own state, uh, and therefore not ask the right questions to get into the record so that you can actually make an issue of it on appeal. And it sounds like that's a lot of knowledge for one individual. Some people might be able to do both skill sets, but this is a need for networking and for a community of attorneys where you can learn from your colleagues. I think that's true. The issue of specialization uh, is, is a critically important to understand for, mm -hmm. for lawyers. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can know everything about every area of law. And we kind of joke at the Supreme Court, well, we know everything about every area of law. <laughs> yeah. But the reality is we have six other great colleagues. Mm -hmm. uh, we each have four law clerks on our staff. And we have a great commissioner's staff. And the commissioners have different areas of expertise. Mm -hmm. So we're starting with reports from people who have expertise in a particular area that help guide us to the right direction. Mm -hmm. And then we can go from there. If you're a trial lawyer out there on your own, or even if you're in a firm, if you're not talking to the appellate lawyers who understand that area very well, I think you're, you're potentially uh, shortcutting your, your client because you're just not preparing yourself as well and you're not preparing your record as well as you might be able to otherwise. Yes, excellent points. Are you aware of any educational opportunities that there are for people out there to prepare them for arguing before the Supreme Court other than you had mentioned other attorneys within the firm, potentially the appellate department in a firm. But if we're talking about a solo or a small firm, you know, obviously, or sometimes they may have difficulty in having someone to bounce something off from and to get that guidance from. Do you have any suggestions? The first suggestion I would make is that you go to the Michigan Supreme Court YouTube channel. There are arguments on a monthly basis from October uh, through May. And each of those oral arguments is ultimately posted on the YouTube channel. And you can look at those arguments and see immediately what works and what doesn't work with the justices. How uh, a particular skilled appellate attorney will handle uh, a question from a justice uh, and how those attorneys who really don't understand what the justice is driving at and struggle with those questions. So that's one really good way of seeing what works and what doesn't and what kind of preparation you should make. A social media outlet. We were yeah. just talking about that earlier today and how what a great job the Michigan Supreme Court does uh, with social media. So that's wonderful. You're getting it firsthand there. Yes, we're very <laughs> proud. Uh, in fact, uh, the justices will uh, sometimes look at the YouTube arguments ourselves. Interesting. Uh, just to get a, uh, you know, you're reading it in a transcript, but to actually uh, look at how the lawyer handled the question and mm -hmm. how, what the justices especially said when they were presenting the question. Uh, I think those are useful and, and we use it ourselves. That's very interesting. Another thing we were talking about a little earlier was the demeanor and decorum of attorneys that are arguing a case before the Supreme Court. I thought maybe our audience would be interested in hearing your thoughts on that issue. It's very interesting as a trial lawyer to read your jury. You get a sense of uh, which way the jury is trending. Sometimes the emotion uh, of the oral argument, uh, or sometimes the skillful cross-examination of a witness impacts a jury. And a skilled lawyer will see all of that and, and make a point to emphasize that in the closing arguments. Uh, that's not really something that works at the Supreme Court. Uh, we're not heartless, uh, but we understand that our job is really applying facts to the law and understanding the fabric of the law that is impacted by the particular case before us. So we do have to put aside some of that emotion uh, to decide the particular case before us. And it's not really helpful uh, for a lawyer to argue with an impassioned tone uh, about how uh, important it is to decide the case in their favor. In fact, it, it seems a little manipulative. Uh, rather, let's have a conversation. This is um, seven uh, lawyers who are well-trained having discussion 
at the time with another lawyer who's well trained and who's trying to help us understand what the key facts in the case are and how the law should be developed through our ruling so that the law is very well settled and importantly uh, causes uh, there to be a, a just result. And that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. It's a conversation, not a yelling match. Yeah, mm -hmm. so some of the theatrics that might be of a benefit to an attorney in the courtroom are not going to be at the Supreme Court. They really aren't. No. Uh, I, I, I've seen lawyers who have tried that, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's not to say that the court won't rule in your favor mm -hmm. if we believe mm -hmm. the facts and the law require it. But it's just not helpful to persuade mm -hmm. the judges. In fact, it's, it's a little disarming. It's a little negative. Mm -hmm. It sounds like if there's a lot of theatrics, then you have to use some energy to look past it. One of my favorite lines to an attorney who's doing that is to say uh, that, counsel, you already had your opportunity at the jury. This is mm -hmm. the appellate court now. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, that makes the point mm -hmm. uh, that we really don't need the theatrics. Uh, and it's fine that you're passionate about your case. Uh, you would want to see the lawyer be passionate about the case. But there's a right way and a wrong way to, mm -hmm. to demonstrate that passion. Mm -hmm. I would rather have the passion uh, in a very well-written brief, in a very uh, skillful oral argument, mm -hmm. uh, not theatrics. Very good. Well, it looks like we've reached the end of our program. I want to thank our guest today, Justice Wilder. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about the Michigan Supreme Court. It's been a great honor. It's our pleasure. If our listeners have questions or wish to follow up with you, how can they find you? I think they should go to the Michigan Supreme Court's Twitter feed or our Michigan Supreme Court Facebook page. Thank you. You're welcome. This has been another edition of the State Bar of Michigan On Balance podcast. I'm Joanne Hathaway. And I'm Tish Vincent. Until next time, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the State Bar of Michigan On Balance podcast. Brought to you by the State Bar of Michigan and produced by the broadcast professionals at Legal Talk Network. If you'd like more information about today's show, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via Apple Podcasts and RSS. Find the State Bar of Michigan and Legal Talk Network on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Or download Legal Talk Network's free app in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by Legal Talk Network or the State Bar of Michigan or their respective officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.